Photoshop, if you go to image mode right there, you'll see it's a grayscale image. So just so you can see what's going on there, I'm gonna make a new layer on this file. So here's a new layer, it's just a blank layer. And I'm gonna click in the color picker and oh look, color's showing up. So I'm gonna make this bright red color and I'm going to pick the brush tool, uh, B for brush tool. So you see, oh wait, now I look at my color picker over here, it's gray. Okay, I'll pick a different color. I'll pick this light blue color. So in the color picker, it looks like I'm clicking blue. I click okay, but then once you look over in the foreground color, you'll see it's not that blue color, it's gray. As if I, I paint, you'll see I'm not painting blue like my color picker says, I'm painting gray because it's only grayscale. So if I were to go to image, mode, RGB, there's all of these are color modes, but let's just stick with RGB. And so I'm not gonna flatten my image because I want this layer here. So now, now it, it processes color. It wasn't able to think in color before that. So it's essential that you very first thing you do is change it to RGB. So you can see the name of my file, Retro Girl Gray 150 PPI JPEG uh, RGB. Okay, well that's not a good name. So I'm gonna very first thing save it. I'll go to save as and I'll um, save it as not a JPEG, but a Photoshop file. And then I'll name this last name, dash first name, dash colorization, just like the um, assignment says. And then I'll ch make it the date today is 040720. And so that's how we'll save it. I would do that right off the bat after you colorize it. And then we're gonna start colorizing. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, colorize her. I'll start easy. I'll colorize this ring. So I'm going to zoom up on this ring and I've got a gem here and I've got a uh, metal there. So I'm going to color the metal first. And so I'm going to get the pen tool, P for pen tool. And then if you look at the top in the, in the, uh, the pen tool mode here, I have path and shape and pixels. And so uh, the default is path. On our last pen tool project, we did shape, but we're gonna do path. And so I'm just going to, I'll zoom in so I can see well, and I'm just going to click and maybe do a little click and drag here, hold option if I wanna change um, direction and I'll go around the edge of this ring. And then I'm gonna, I've got the gem there. So I've got that metal part there. And then if I look in my path mode, you'll see I have a work path. I'm not done with it though, cause I have metal on this side. And when I get done with the, um, the selection, it will get a little circle there. Um, which means closed path. I'm gonna draw this side of my pen. I'll hold option to change direction. This side of the ring, I said pen, I meant ring. And let's see what's going on with it here. I'm having to guess a little bit um, what the edge of that is. So now I've got a path. You can see the path, it's in blue. Uh, this tool right here underneath, uh, to underneath the pen is called the path tool selection. You can see uh, when I zoom up, you'll see I've got uh, squares. Those are anchor points. And then in my, in my uh, path panel, it should be right by your layers, paths. If you don't see it, go to window paths. Uh, but I've got a layer, it will always be named work path. Double click on it and uh, name, I'll name this path ring. Maybe I'll name it ring ring gold. Okay, and so now I've got a saved path and that's really important for full, full credit on this. I've got, first thing I'll do is look at your colorization and see if you did a good job. Next thing I'll do is I'll go to your paths palette and see that you saved all your paths. 
Okay, now that I have the path selected, I'll go command click on that path. Now I have marching ants. And so that's a selection. And it's not a lot different than if I had gotten the uh, quick selection tool and selected or the lasso tool or some other tool. But in this case, the pin tool uh, it's the best tool because there's a lot of areas on this particular image that don't have um, good contrast. So I've got marching ants there. I'm going to go to layers palette and then adjustment layers. They live two places. There's adjustments right here. And then there's adjustments in the bottom of your layer palette. I'll go to that one because you can see the names hue saturation and it's going to make a hue saturation adjustment layer. And this thing right here to the side is a layer mask. You can see I've got everything blocked out, but the white area there is going to be colorized, but nothing's happened. I don't see any color. That's because this Im image has no color info. So first thing I need to do once I have an, a, a hue saturation adjustment layer, I click colorize and look, now it's blue. And I can pull the hue, hue is the, the color. So I want a golden color here. I'll pull it over to around the yellow. Saturation is how much of that color. See if I pull it all the way over to the right, it's going to be extreme. If I pull it all the way over to the left, it's going to be black and white again. So desaturation means you're taking color out. You're making it um, muted color. And so I want it um, about middle range there. Lightness, we'll make it lighter or darker. And you may or may not need to move that one at all. You'll for sure need to move hue. And there I go, I'm pretty happy with that color. So I'm gonna go, I, I don't want a layer named hue saturation, so I'm gonna name this ring um, metal or ring gold, I liked that. So there we go. Uh, and I can turn that off and on. So it's not destructive editing because I can turn it off and on. Now I'm gonna make my gem, I'll get my pen tool. I'm still in path mode. It's really essential that you're in path mode. Um, sometimes students will run into problems with the pen tool. Uh, within um, the pen tool in path mode, um, let's see, uh, there's, one right here that's called path operations and you'll see combine shape subtract front shape uh, when you go do chapter eight in classroom in a book you'll it will have you click subtract eight there's a coffee cup you do where you have to poke the hole out of the center between the handle of the cup uh, just make sure you're using any of these except subtract front shape the default is exclude overlapping shapes You'll know you did that if in your paths palette, instead of this gray with a little uh, circle that's uh, area that's white, you'll see it's white everywhere, but gray. It'll be the opposite of what this path is. So I'm gonna do, so I'm in path mode in the pen tool and under the, uh, the modes here, I'm just doing exclude overlapping shapes. That will work fine. I'm gonna click on the, the gem here. And go around that and that's a nice jam. I have a new path called work path. If you don't save your path, it will just, they'll be named work path, but then your last path will disappear when you make your next one. So it's essential that you always name your path. So I'm gonna call this ring gem. Then I will hold command and click. There are other things you can do in my paths layer. Look right here at the bottom I have um, a couple of options. I can throw the path away. There's a trash can. I can create a new path. I can add a vector mask. We're not going to worry about vector mask today. I'll introduce that later. Um, I can stroke a path or I can make marching ants. So I could click this one here and I'll get marching ants or I can just hold command and click on the, the path itself. I'm going to go ahead and park that back over here. Okay, I've got marching ants. I'll go back to my layers and I'll go to adjustments and um, hue saturation and 
if you hover over these, it, it will tell you what they are here. This one here is hue saturation. You see, if I hover over that, it says brightness up there. If I hover over this, it says levels. And so hue saturation looks like that. So it doesn't matter at all whether you click here or if you click down at the, at the little circle cut in half for, for hue saturation. Again, I need to hit colorization. That's always important. And I'll make it, um, I think I decided I wanted it to be a um, emerald. They're green, I'll make it a little bit brighter. And there I've got an emerald. I could make it be a ruby, it's gonna be red, that's pretty. Um, I'll stick with an emerald. Uh, I maybe wanna make it a little darker. I think that'll look better. And there I've got a ring, it's named hue saturation. I will name it uh, ring gem. Okay, and so now I've got her ring all colored. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to um, go to the bottle next here, or maybe I'll go to the hand next. Uh, the hands I can do, the hands and the face all, all at once. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do something, uh, I'm gonna do the hands and the face and the bottle once. So that's gonna take a little, a little more time to select. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to cheat and just go to my paths that I already have selected. And let's see, I've got hand on bottle here. And just for the sake of speed, I'm going to select that hand that's on the bottle, copy, and then I'll go to today's demo and paste that path. And see, now I've got that hand on the bottle. Um, that's good. I wouldn't actually do that hand on the bottle separate. I would do uh, all the skin together, but I've got the hand on the bottle and it's uh, it's it made a vector mask here, so uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll get rid of that vector mask. I'm just going to go. Um, I'm going to call this hand for that layer, and then I'll throw away the vector mask. Vector mask will will get into while we're discussing vector in the pen tool, but I don't want to do vector mask today. Uh, just just to keep it simple. So I'm gonna command click, hold command or control PC and click on the mask. It gives me marching ants. And again, I'll go to hue saturation and colorize that hand, click colorize in the properties panel. You do all your work in the properties panel on this assignment, she has a blue Hand. And so maybe you guys go, oh, that's cool. It's, uh, she's a, she's, uh, I don't know, Glenda the, no, it's uh, whatever the Wicked Witch of the East is uh, with green skin. And you're going, oh, I wanna, wanna have her green. Well, that's not what this assignment is. If you guys wanna do some, you know, crazy coloring where people are uh, different colors, do an extra piece. But this one here, we're realistically coloring it. And so she's 1940s. Um, I don't want purple hair because people didn't have purple hair in 1940. Uh, people have all sorts of colors hair now, and that's fine. They can have whatever color of hair they want. But we're doing a 19, uh, there's actually a date on this letter here. Um, I thought, but it's, it's uh, somewhere, oh, June's, uh, June 6, 1943. So it's right in the middle of World War II. Okay, so I've got the, the green hand. I don't want it to be green. I want it to be skin colored. And so I'm going to pull that over into the skin color realm. I'll pump up the saturation a little bit. It's a little orange. Go a little bit to more yellow. And then I'll play with the uh, brightness contrast. Still a little too yellow. Um, and I'll desaturate a little bit. That was too saturated. So I've got a reasonable skin color. Oh, wow. Hey, Mr. Dennis, what happened to your ring? It's now skin colored. 
All right, well, let's call that hand. And these adjustment layers stack just like layers. Watch what happens when I pull hand under ring gem. Okay, there's my gem of, of visible now and I'll pull it under ring gold and now I can see the gold of the ring. All right, so that works well. And I would just use, I would do not just the hand, I would do all the hair, the skin, both hands and the face all at the same time. But just for sake of a quicker demo, I'm just gonna do that hand for now. And then I'm gonna do the bottle here. I'll, I'll actually trace the bottle. And so you may be inclined to go, okay, I've got to trace all the way around this hand again. You don't, you already have that tracing when you trace the hand. So what I'm gonna do on the bottle, I'm gonna go right through the hand. So here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm in path, I'm still in path, I'm in the pen tool, I'm still in path mode. And I'll start right here and click. I'm gonna go all the way around this bottle. And I'll go through her fingernails. I would, I would paint her fingernails separately. Maybe I'll do that in a minute. And I need to change directions here. So I hold option, I'll zoom up so you can see what I'm doing better. I'll come and click and drag. I have a handle. I hold option to change directions, just like we did last class on the waves or the hearts or the various shapes that we need to change directions on. So I'm just clicking and dragging, holding option to change direction, click and drag. This is exactly like the waves we did last class. Click and drag, hold option to change the handle. I'm gonna zoom in um, so you can see the anchor points, this square, it's highlighted right now. This is a handle, this is a handle. If I were to, um, I'm holding option, that gives me the quick selection tool. If I hold option and pull that handle, you can see what it does to that curve. So I can nudge that handle, I can grab this handle with the quick selection tool. If I'm off a little bit on my curve, I can adjust it with the quick selection tool. And then I'm zoomed up too much to tell what's going on click and drag again, hold option. And so this has a lot of ripply ridges. So you're going to do just like you did on the, on the waves. And it'll take a minute for me to get around this bottle, but not too long. That side's done and I'll, if I don't, on this point here, I didn't want a handle because it's just a square corner. So I didn't click and drag, I just clicked. Then I'll come here, do a little click and drag, change direction. And I'll get this side of the bottle now. And then this will be a little bit uh, trickier um, mask, uh, situation. Once I have this bottle selected well, I'm going to change it. I think it's, uh, you can make it be whatever flavor of soda you want. Um, I think in the example, it's like a Sprite or a 7-Up, it's green, but it, it doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to be green. Um, just make it look good. I want realistic coloring. You're not, you, you don't have to exactly, I think my demo, the girl's hair is, or on the example, I think her hair is blonde. Uh, doesn't have to be blonde. It can be um, red or, or uh, don't make it too dark um, because it will just look, it'll look black, but you can colorize that. I'm just gonna cut right through her fingers here. I'm not gonna spend the time to retrace over that. 
if you do that, what you're gonna find is you'll get little slivers of black and white. So I'm just gonna cut right through her hands there. Um, and I've got the bottle all selected. I go to the paths palette. I'm gonna name that work path bottle. I'll hold command and click on the path. I've got marching ants now. I go to layers and um, to adjustments, hue saturation, colorize. I've got a blue bottle there and let's say I wanna have um, a purple bottle, that's pretty. Maybe I want, uh, I like that saturation. Saturation again, uh, will make it really super saturated or gray on the other end. So I'll add just a little bit of saturation. I'm gonna play with the color. Uh, I think I'll knock it down just a little bit to a minus 10. So that's great. And sometimes, um, remember when the hands covered up the ring? Well, I've got the bottle covering the hand, so I'll pull bottle below. And sometimes it works great, just like it did on the ring and you don't see what I have going on here. So I've got a problem right here with the, the bottle. It's making the, her fingers be a darker color. And she's not an invisible girl. And so again, I told you, you don't have to retrace all that, but here's what I'm gonna do. And this is a little bit more um, advanced masking here. Here is the mask for the bottle. And here is the mask for the hand here. See that? And so what I'm gonna do is command click on that hand mask. So I have this selection of her hand. Now I'm gonna go into the bottle. And if I were to paint black through that, you'll see what happens. Um, those areas where I painted, uh, it's not really apparent, those areas where I painted on the bottle black, you can see it's, uh, getting rid of that um, that area. So I'm just going to, black is my foreground color. I want to paint black in this area here. I could just brush it in, but I know option plus the delete key fills with black. So there, I've modified that bottle mask. See the bottle mask now is uh, masking out the areas where her fingers are and we don't have that heavy shadow. So um, need to hit save because my heartbeat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do uh, her hair because that's a, a tricky area here. I've got a um, an image here um, that well, I'll, I'll think I'll do her face first. So I'm gonna go to the paths for the face here and just select it just for sake of time. Um, and click on that face. There it's selected. I'm gonna copy it, go over to my other image that I'm working on today. And um, Paste that path and I'm gonna call this face. Now I'll command click on the face and I already have color here from the skin. So um, I'm actually gonna deselect that. And here's that uh, hand selection here. I'm going to duplicate that layer Command J will duplicate or just duplicate layer. And so I'm gonna call this layer face. And it's already has the um, color info I need except for its mask to just her hand. So I'm going to delete that uh, mask. So now everything's her, that skin color. I'll go back to the face layer I had selected, marching ants on that. And now I'll make a layer mask on that. So you see that's made just her face. And see what I've done with the hair? There's all this uh, hair area. I'll need to come back in and, and uh, 
not have a hard line between the hair and the, the skin. So here's a little, um, here's a little demo um, on the hair. I've got, um, deselect that. So if you have a path selected, like I just did, I didn't explain what I did. I've got a path selected here and it's a little bit distracting to work with the face. Uh, if you wanna deselect a path in the path palette, you just click. If I click on another path, it will just select that path. But I just click in this gray area here to deselect a path. Now I'm back to layers here. I've got a uh, bad hair day um, and you can see uh, if I zoom in, it may not be super apparent, but I've got a little bit too hard of a line here. And I've got good hair day, and that looks much better. Not the necessarily the hair color, but just how these fine hairs here uh, blend into her skin color. So how I did that, here's a test to show you. Um, here's a uh, hair test. Uh, I colored a larger area than, so I just pen tool, click, click, click all the way around that. And then um, I can come in with the, um, this hair test. I can get the, the, I think I may have, uh, okay, I've got a, I'm gonna turn that layer off, uh, hair test. I've got a path called hair test one. And here's that path. You can see I, I was really close to the edge, but I didn't go beyond the hair there. And then I did go beyond the hair here. So if I turn that into a mask, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna go um, make a new hue saturation adjustment and colorize. And let's say her hair's red-ish little saturation, a little more golden. There we go, I'm liking that hair color. Um, and so we, we, I selected that with the pen tool, but I can still come in with the quick selection tool. I've got a mask here, I'll, I, I say quick selection, I meant the selected mask. I, have, I select the mask itself in the properties panel, I click select and mask, and you're familiar with the select and mask. Um, and I'm gonna to go to overlay mode so I can see what's going on a little bit better. I'll get the refine edge tool here. And so in this instance, I have uh, gone inside of all these flyaways and I'll, I'll come in and try to get these hair selected and it's, it's not doing a real good job, see that? And I'll try to get these hairs selected here, see if I get a, a good selection. And so I'm scribbling all around here. I'm, it doesn't look like it's giving me a good selection. We'll see if it did or not. From everything I'm seeing here, it doesn't look that good. So I'll go ahead and say, okay, and uh, I didn't get a very good selection. So I'm gonna turn that layer off. I'm gonna go back to my paths. That was hair test one. Here's hair test two. And you can see <clears throat> I went well beyond where the hair is. So let's see how this one works. Command click on that selection, you see that? And then I'll go back to my layers. I'll make a hue saturation and I'll click colorize and I'll make it a reddish hair color again. Oh, she'll be blonde today. Um, pump up the saturation a little bit, maybe make it a little bit lighter. There, she's blonde. And I don't wanna see the background. I don't see this hard line on the background. So I'm going to, again, click on the mask, enter select and mask. And then with the quick, with the refine edge tool, I can come in and theoretically get a better selection. Let's see how that works. I'm getting a good selection around the hair. It's not that great up here, but we'll fix that. So I'm just going, uh, it's getting better. I'm just going all the way around this area here. And that's looking pretty good. Then I'm gonna come where the hair meets the skin. And 
there we go. I've got a pretty nice selection, I think. Let's take a look. And I still have some uh, hard edge out here. Um, so I'm not liking that too much. I'll uh, look at my um, layer mask here. Remember, I could go to dodge and burn. I demoed um, that before. So here's, here's the burn tool. I'm going to come in. Whoops, the dodge tools when I need. I'm going to come in with the dodge tool and the burn tool. And I'm going to burn um, away that area so I don't have that, that halo. I can also just come in with a regular brush. And I could do that. I could have done that in the, in the refine edge of the select and mask mode. So I'm just going to color away that area and then back to in the dodge and burn tool. I showed you last class that they won't in 2020 Photoshop show up too well. So there I've got a really nice selection of her hair and that's, that's how you do the hair selection. So I'll do that really quick. Uh, so that, that little demo, the hair uh, could be a frustrating area. So I just wanted to show you both uh, that way to do the hair. So here's how I would do that hair. I would get the pen tool and I would just click around the outer edge of the pen tool. I wouldn't even be super careful. I would probably, uh, I would be more careful on her face here. I would probably uh, click and drag, but I already have this selection here. So um, I could do the same thing I did before. And I think I will do that just for sake of a demo. I'll not even worry about uh, this border here, I already have that defined on the face selection. I've got all these fine hairs where her um, her scalp meets her face. And then I'm just cutting inside of this area because I already have that selected on the on the skin adjustment layer. So going all the way around this. And there's my selection for the hair. It's not a super great selection, but it's just what I need. It's a work path. I call it hair. I called it her for some reason. I'll rename it hair. Okay, I'll command click to get marching ants. I will do a hue saturation adjustment layer. Colorize, don't want blue hair. And so she's gonna have a blondish, maybe a brown hair I'll, if I, if I pump the saturation up and I lighten it a little bit, it will become a, a, a blonde hair. If I keep it uh, in this realm, she's gonna have a, a brownish hair. So, uh, you know, give her a natural hair, blonde or brown or red, not green, not orange, not purple, uh, just because the era we were uh, illustrating here. So I've got kind of, uh, I think I'll darken that up a little bit. Um, I'm going to give her some brown hair here. And I don't have a good selection in this area. So I click on my mask, select and mask, refine edge. And I'll just paint that area all in. And then this time I'm not going to come in um, with the, the burn tool. I'm going to do some fixing right while I'm in the... Um, Refine, ed refine edge and the uh, select and mask tool. Sometimes there's a little lag. Uh, I've got 64 gigs of RAM on this machine and it's still, it, I'm still getting a little lag. And that's, you know, that's maxed out RAM for this machine. So if, if you drag along here and it takes a second to render, just be patient. Uh, you may, our machines at the school have 32 gigs of RAM um, and they lag sometimes. 
So if you get a little lag, don't stress over it. Just, just wait a minute. Okay, I've got, I've got some semi-decent selection here. It's a little hard to tell, uh, but I know I have a hard edge all the way around here. I'm going to get the, right underneath the Refine Edge tool. There's a brush tool, and it's set at hardness 100%. I want a hardness zero. I want a soft brush, and I usually never select the size here. I always just do with um, the um, brackets, right bracket, key, make it bigger, left bracket, key, make it smaller. So I just want to get rid of this edge here. And you see it's painting uh, a mask in, uh, and I don't have a white or black to paint white or black, but you have modes here. You have add or subtract. So I'll click that subtract mode there. And then I can come in and just uh, kiss the edge of that hard area there. So I'm not gonna have that hard outline around her hair. And same thing there. Again, I'm not worrying about the face right now because I'm gonna fix that with the, um, with that area I already had masked. Now I'm gonna come back into this area with a quick selection tool, go back over this area. You see it's working a little bit better now that I did that mask. And I'm gonna get a, a pretty good selection, I think, here on this hair. So, you know, and I, I making it worse over here. So see, I, it, it added that mask back. I'm in a, or that dark back. So I'll come back in with a brush, paint that away a little bit. I've got a pretty decent selection there. I click OK. And so I've got all these nice uh, loose hairs. And so um, in the past, we would have, if we were doing uh, a girl's hair like this or a man's hair or a plush animal, which I've done hundreds of plush animal retouchings working for Mattel Toys. Um, you, you, we would usually just cut this kind of stuff off in the old days, but we can get really good selection. So this is a selection with a pen tool and just refine edge. Okay, so I've got uh, a nice mask here. When I look at this file, I will option click on your hair. I'll go ahead and name that layer hair. I will absolutely hold option and click on your mask and I will be looking for this type of uh, refined edge stuff here so that I know that you did. I don't have that good of a selection here. Um, I could come back in and double click, um, enter select a mask and um, I'll refine edge a little bit more in that area. See if I can get a better selection. Okay, that's a little bit better. And click OK. So I've got a better selection there. I don't want to see a line in your background that's her hair color or a background, in, uh, vice versa. Okay, so now I have a bad selection on her, uh, her face here. I will go to face, command, click the face. I've got marching ants there. Now I can, on her hair, just brush some black in that area. Here's a big brush. See, I'm just brushing away this area where the where I didn't want it. I'm going to get uh, just close to this area where the hair is there, and then I can come back in. So now I don't have that hard line. I can. Uh, that's a soft, blurry edge. I'll want to get a refine edge there as well. So. I'll go back to select a mask. It's taken a couple of trips there, but I'll come in with select a mask in that hair area. And you can see, if I'll zoom up, you'll see um, when I do the select a mask in that area, I'll get a a lot better selection of her hair. Same thing over here. Uh, I don't have good selection of the hair in this area. So there, I'm getting a 
a much better selection. And there we go. That looks great. I hit save. And so um, what I would say um, is just that's, that's the trickiest area, the hair there. I've demoed it. Um, I've shown both in the face and in the bottle how to um, make a selection and then subtract the selection, the fingers that overlapped, the face where it overlapped the hair. And so just go through every area on this project. I want her collar colorized. I want the buttons colorized. I want the sweater colorized. I want the blanket colorized. The uh, wall in the background is going to be a different color than the blanket. Most of you don't have a, a blanket that's the exact same color as a wall, and I'm assuming this girl didn't as well. And so just go through everything on this again with the with the uh, letter here. I would do just like I did with the bottle. I would click, and it's not perfectly flat, so I would maybe click and drag a little bit here. There's a little bend there. Click and drag, click, click. And I just cut right through her fingers because I know I'm going to get a good selection of her fingers independent. And I, I don't want to do the same work twice. And so if I trace all the way around these fingers when I'm doing the, the letter, and then I go back all the way around them and trace them when I'm doing her hands, that's just going to be a lot of work. So I don't want to do that. Um, you may say, well, I only want to do the value area here. There's a white uh, outline around the edge of it. Um, that's could go either way. I'm going to call this letter. And a letter like this would be like a, um, a, uh, like a blue print letter or a brown print letter, uh, sometimes a green, green type of print. So just from that, from that era, I click colorize and I'm going to make it kind of, uh, um, I'll make it a brown and then play with the saturation a little bit. It'll be fairly desaturated, play with the light a little bit, and it's going to be this brown letter. And then, uh, oh, uh, um, then I'm going to call that and uh, I made a I made a vector mask on that one um, just got a little bit too hasty with my clicking and made a vector mask this is what a vector mask looks like um, and I'll have a project um, on t uh, upcoming that will be um, um, probably, probably either this next Thursday or I think I won't do it on Thursday. I'll push it out um, and do a demo to show you how to do it um, um, during our former spring break time or uh, the Tuesday following spring break. So that's how we do things. Again, the the hand. I I don't know if I have that hand already drawn. I don't want to make it any longer of a demo than I have to. I don't have that hand selected there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that good here, but the same thing we did before, if I had made this finger selection, I would just delete it from the mask I had done on the hand. And then the neat thing about this is you're looking at a uh, hue saturation adjustment layer. You can come to your your client, you're colorizing this and they'll go, oh, this is kind of like blueprint stuff. It's not brown. And you'll go, oh, okay, no problem. Here you go. It's like a blueprint. And so it's easy to, to color things, pump up the saturation, uh, lighter or darker. And so that's the, that's the neat thing about adjustment layers. You can come back um, years later and say, oh, I want to change that color. Okay, so I've got all of these layers. Notice, oh, I didn't lay it, name bottle. I'm gonna name bottle. 
all of those layers need to be named and they all need to be in a layer group folder. So I'm gonna just hold, I'll select this one, I hold shift and select the bottom one. They're all selected now. I'll click the little layer group folder icon here. I'm gonna name all of those colorization. There you go. And I can turn that colorization off. Obviously my original black and white are on. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, and then I would, uh, so I want good file organization. I would hold uh, right click and colorize the colorization layer group folder. And um, that's how you do it. You just need to do every single area of it. Um, I'll, I'll uh, give you a page uh, either next week or on, uh, on Thursday of this week about going the next level on these, um, adding some extra details like blush and, and a little bit of glisten to the eye and, and stuff like that. I'll either give you a demo or just a page on that. But uh, that's basically how we colorize this. Um, I've got another colorization one. Maybe you wanna do your own project. Maybe you have a, uh, this is your, great aunt when she was a little girl and you want to colorize that instead it's got some streaks here and um a little skull logo there uh oh, so maybe you'll want to retouch it I, I haven't taught retouching yet but i could retouch that out and then on a separate layer and then i can colorize that so um so you can choose a different image. You still have to pen tool everything and then turn them into layer mask. I'll, I'll click on your paths and I'll wanna see, I'll wanna see paths 